people. Mr. Speaker, permit me to first and foremost express my deepest gratitude to my colleague, the Honorable Senior Minister with Responsibility for Finance, and his very hardworking team for putting together and presenting an exceptionally remarkable budget, despite the challenges and amidst a COVID environment. A presentation, I dare say, Mr. Speaker, that is impossible to be rivaled by any member of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, as I stand here, I have heard the Honorable Member, Ms. Halley, give her take on Budget 2020. But first, I would like to respectfully thank the Honorable Member, and I am very flattered that she listens to me while I speak. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, while I thank the member for raising her voice this budget, because last budget I could not have heard what she said clearly, I wish to respectfully request that she improve her argument. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member sought to offer me assistance. And while it is great to have a cut and paste speech, it was unhelpful. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2021 comes on the heels of an emergency budget approved in September 2020, which kick-started relief measures aimed at unburdening our nation's people. Burdens that were every bit as oppressive and suffocating as those of the 1970s and the 1980s. And it is amazing that up to today's date, it has escaped the opposition minds how they have lost the elections. They were voted out for every single thing that they held on a chokehold of this nation. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I have listened to a lot of nonsense coming out of the, the Honorable Opposition Member's mouth for the last day and a half. The opposition members, since the commencement of this budget, has been attacking this budget for being visionless and oppressive. But, Mr. Speaker, this nation must never forget what oppression from the opposition is. They must never forget that our people were taxed up to their neck from 2015 to 2020. They must never forget that thousands of jobs were lost, 7,000 sugar workers, 2,000 CFOs, were, they lost the ability to earn an income. We must never forget in this honorable house, in this very center, the members, my colleagues and I on this side of the house, were oppressed and prevented from using our cell phones during the recount. We were oppressed and, re and repressed from giving a response to nonsense of allegations that were raised and orchestrated by the opposition. That is what oppression is, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2021 cannot be associated with the word oppression or failure, the word oppression or failure. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I go on the very words that, they continue, that the honorable members continuously use, oppression. Mr. Speaker, I will never forget on the 13th of March, 2020, as I left the GCOM headquarters at Kingston, 
I was nearly beaten up by supporters while the APNU AFC members were standing right there. That is oppression, Mr. Speaker. And that is why, that is why they were voted out, Mr. Speaker, for their bullyism, for their strangulation of the economy, for their racism. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2021 seeks again to build on the rule of law and democracy. Mr. Speaker, members of the opposition should never come to this honorable house and put this honorable house in disrepute by even mentioning the word democracy. They try to steal a whole election suffocate the will of the people and come here and say that they had 50% of Guyanese? No, they did not. They did not. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, just two days ago, His Excellency, the President of the United States of America, Mr. Joseph Biden, congratulated the President and Guyanese on achieving the 51st Republic and stated that Guyana has a strong democracy, no thanks to the opposition. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, while Guyana, while a, part, a portion of Guyana is being threatened to be unhinged. The opposition continues to carry a narrative that wants to divide our country. In addition, Mr. Speaker, we have witnessed something that is unprecedented in the world. The Honorable Member Ms. Cummings revoking accreditation for international counterparts. Honorable, Honorable Minister, revoking? I was around. I Thank your pardon, sir. You may need to withdraw that. Threatening to revoke, I apologize. In any event, Mr. Speaker, it is unprecedented. Mr. Speaker, I have also heard in this honorable house in the last day and a half, that there was no invitation to the opposition for a consultation on budget 2021. But Mr. Speaker, I will say this. The truth is a foreign concept to the opposition members. And we continuously see that. While we, while we come here on a, on a highly consultative process with every relevant stakeholders, the opposition wishes to sit at Stabrook and have a people's parliament without people and, in, and come, instead of coming to have meaningful consult consultation, they have done that. How can Guyanese take the opposition seriously? How can they take them seriously when in fact they are a clown show and they have been so, they have been showing this country that all the time. Mr. Speaker, I'm going back to the days of pre-K as well. And I will say that, you know, I want to, I want to extend a great, a good hand to the opposition. Yes, no, 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 right now. Two things. I am seriously considering in my lovely budget that I have for the Ministry of Public Service, scholarships in mathematics comprehension. That will assist. I will also point the honorable members of the opposition to the honorable minister of health budget that carries a good portion for mental health. It includes pathological dot, dot, dot.
The opposition has stated, His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali has invite, had invited Mr. Granger to have a consultation of, president, of past presidents with the current president. And that was refused, Mr. Speaker. But then again, from all accounts, it seems that the coalition has a serious leadership crisis. One is a chairman, one is a GS, one is the head of the party, and the, co the AFC is disintegrating on a daily basis. So who, logically, who is to be consulted with? But nevertheless, Mr. Granger was invited to a consultation. Refused. Mr. Speaker, elementary language, logically again, how are you supposed to consult with someone who cannot recognize and that the world recognizes the president as a legitimate and democratically elected president of Guyana? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker, there has been a lot of bantering about COVID being on the rise and the health sector not being able to put a handle on it. But Mr. Speaker, I wish to draw your attention to the fact that two of the honorable members, honorable members on the opposition side, while tested positive for COVID, sat amidst us in this very honorable house and put all of us recklessly at risk and now have turned and said that the, that the government does not have a strategic plan. I point the honorable members, I point the honorable members to page four to four of the budget speech. And I wish to quote, for 2021, government made a provision of over $750 million to support the rolling out of COVID-19 vaccines from February and for the rest of the year in a phased approach. So, Mr. President, there has been, there is an allocation in this budget. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. There has been an allocation in this budget, a sizable allocation in this budget, that will see the rolling out of vaccines to take care of the Guyanese population. So, Mr. Speaker, I wish to say again that the opposition needs to stop with the pathological untruth just to gain any cheap political points that will, may come their way. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I wish now to rebut the Honorable Member Ms. Halley's speech. Several things in her speech. Inaccuracies as a matter of fact. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member comes to this House and thinks that it is justifiable and honorable that she granted herself a scholarship, a scholarship which I might, say, I might add for the sum of 10,080 pounds that should have lasted two years and up to today's date we do not have a record at the Ministry of Public Service that she has ever completed it. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it is one thing to come to this house and say, there is nothing wrong with me being granted a scholarship. There is something very wrong with you giving the Honorable Member, Ms. Nicolette Henry, a scholarship. There is something very wrong in sitting in a public office and giving the Honorable Member Annette Ferguson a scholarship. 
there is something very wrong with giving the Honorable Member Simona Brooms and Simona Brooms' children scholarships that amounted to 25,000 U.S. that could have gone to those that are in need and who are financially unable to support themselves to go to the University of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, when you take public office, it is not to help yourself. It is to serve the Guyanese people. So do not come here and try to justify that you helped yourself instead of helping the nation. Mr. Speaker, it is not justifiable, again, that there are persons, there is a backlog of 70,000 applications sitting in the housing sector. And the former Minister of Public Service, the Honorable Member Ms. Halley, applied for a scholarship in June and was granted, that, uh, sorry, not a scholarship, applied for a house lot and was given a house lot in one month. That is what you call self-serving and not service to your country. Mr. Speaker, I have heard, I have heard so much about public servants being terminated and being fired. But Mr. Speaker, I ask the honorable members of the opposition, when they fired 7,000 sugar workers, they didn't look back, they had to go to the courts to get their money. When they fired 2,000 CFOs, what was their justification? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the honorable member, Mr. Christopher Jones, said that 1,500 public servants were fired. If one is to take a look at the budget estimates, volume one, you will find the staffing details there. And you will find that that will amount to just about five or six entire ministries. So Mr. the Honorable Member pulls and plucks numbers out of the air without knowing what he's talking about. And that is completely untrue. Mr. Speaker, I have heard about the, 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 the termination of the staff college, but let me set the record straight here today. The Honorable Member Ms. Halley stood at the staff college and said that it is a premier institution that will allow for entries into all levels at the public service. The reality of that, Mr. Speaker, is that the Staff College was gifted, the government gifted it to themselves from Guy Suko, that is one. Spent $80 million refurbishing one building at Ogle when a training division existed for many years and still exists today in the public service ministry that deals with the induction and induction courses and development courses in the public service. So spent $80 million on that. $87 million was spent for a year on the staffing. On the staffing. On the staffing. It, $87 million was spent on the contracted employees employed at the staff college. 50% of who were retirees. How do you juxtapose that to firing 7,000 sugar workers and putting them on the bread line? How do you justify that? This staff college did not promote fair recruitment practices. Everyone, and the honorable member quoted me incorrectly when she said I said 56 students. It is 60 students for a year that were produced entering it at a clerk three position 
jumping a clerk two position, the, not, the clerk two now had to turn back and train the clerk three who was getting less money than them. How could that have been fair practices? So the, whatever intention was for, the, for this staff college, it did not produce and give that intention. It did not. And Mr. Speaker, I wish to place this on record. The Ministry of Public Service struggled, but found placement for all 60 of those persons who were trained in 2020. Mr. Speaker, budget 20, 20, I am excited to have budget 2021. The Ministry of Public Service has the largest budget that it has ever had at $3 billion and $65 million that will see the improvement across the board. Mr. Speaker, $1 billion, $2 billion, and in excess of $800 million is allocated for training, human resource development. $1 billion of that will go towards the initiative of the 20,000 online scholarship that was promised in the PPPC's manifesto. And let me say this, Mr. Speaker, the manifesto was crafted from numerous consultations with all relevant stakeholders. And as a result of that, it is reflected in the 2021 budget. Mr. Speaker, this billion dollars that is allocated to the Ministry of Public Service will go wider than just an induction course into the public service. This is for national training and we'll see a high tier of education being leveled across, spread equitably across Guyana at 4,000, starting with 4,500 scholarships in 2021. Online scholarships, that is. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Public Service is also heavily allocated in the usual scholarship and training de de department. And if I may say, sir, that not to toot my own horn, but I will do so on this occasion. In 2019, <laughs> in 2019, In 2019, Region 1 was allocated four scholarships. In 2020, Region 1 was allocated 14 scholarships. In 2019, Region 2 was allocated, Region 2 allocated 10 scholarships. In 2020, in a short space of time in the midst of COVID environment, 21 scholarships were granted. In Region 3, 30 scholarships were granted in 2019. In 2020, 51 scholarships were granted in Region 3. In Region 4, 158 were granted and 226 in 2020 with an equitable spread across the sub areas of East Coast and the East Bank rather than centralized in Georgetown. In Region 5, 13, in Region 5, in 2019, there were 13 scholarships granted. In 2020, that went to 23 scholarships. In Region 7, four scholarships in 2019. In 2020, there were seven. In Region 8, zero scholarships for 2019. In, in 2020, there were seven scholarships. In Region 9, there were four scholarships in 2019. In 2020, there were 10 scholarships. In Region 10, there were 33 scholarships. In 2019, 
in 2020, they were forced to fight scholarship. In that short space of time, Mr. Speaker, the PPPC administration was able to deliver and not leave the hinterland behind as we promised. And in, 2000, in 2021, Mr. Speaker, that will invariably improve. So, Mr. Speaker, with the budget allocation of the from the emergency budget, it was well spent on the people of Guyana from the Ministry of Public Service. And might I dare say that the honorable member said that when they entered office in 2015, everything was archaic and old and nothing was computerized. Might I say when I am entered office in August, on August 6, 2020, it was the same way. I am now computerizing all the data for every department. The Ministry of Public Service is not only doing that, sir, but we are increasing training in technical skills by not only granting scholarships and, and financial aid to the, the Georgetown Technical Institute, but also to the Linden Technical Institute, to the Barbies Technical Institute, to the Essequibo Technical Institute. It will be extending this year to all of those areas as we are very aware that technical skills are necessary. The Center of Excellence in Information Technology, Mr. Speaker, 15 million has been allocated in the budget for the Ministry of Public Service to improve on information technology. This will be done in collaboration with the Indian government, which will fund that center as well. So the country can look forward can look forward to a, a, a modern age of information technology. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member when speaking, it is great again that she can cut and paste. However, Mr. Speaker, she must speak from a point of success and there was a failure to do anything by the Honorable Member in her time in office in the Ministry of Public Service. A complete failure to do anything. The Code of Ethics remained the same. The rules from 1987 remained the same. There, there was absolutely no performance management system. All of that is being implemented by the Ministry of Public Service. And with the assistance of the budget of 2021, the Ministry will be able to do all of that. Mr. Speaker, software is being installed and will be installed, and thanks to the budget of 2021, that will be installed to have a shorter turnaround time in the processing of documents within the public service that will see the wheels of government turning faster. That is something that is not done. So, Mr. Speaker, in all sectors in this country, budget 2021, is financially able to manage and bring back this country to stability. Mr. Speaker, every right-thinking Guyanese has come out and has applauded Budget 2021. Every right-thinking organization has come out and applauded Budget 2021 because they realized that government was not doing anything from 2015 to 2020, and now the country will be pulled out of debt because the PPPC has done it from 1992 to 2015 and will do it again. Not only will they pull the country out of debt, but stabilize the economy and make this country great as it should be, Mr. Speaker. Budget 2021 is just the commencement of that. And all of that amid a horrific pandemic that is affecting the entire world. Mr. Speaker, with those words, I give my full support and put my full weight behind Budget 2021.
and its implementation in the development of our country. Thank you.